Yes, hi. Can I talk to somebody from uh, British Authority? Well, this is. What can we help you with? Well, I'm just checking if it's okay to cross. I have an oversized load. Well, if it's over 11 foot, we don't do them till 4 o'clock. No, no, yeah, I know, I know. They call, They just told us to check back at 3.30, see if everything is fine. Well, where, are you going north or south? Which way you head? South, into Canada. Okay. I mean, uh, south on 75. Okay, well, come on down here. We're going to be doing them in a half hour. You can come down now. Oh, okay. And, uh, where do I park? Somewhere on the side there? All the way to the right, in the emergency lane. Okay, thank you, sir. You're welcome. Bye. like finally we can go sometimes my Google Maps just shuts down you know like this all of a sudden <laughs> and then it restarts and the guy says I uh, see the guy said yeah you can come down now those two other guys <laughs> they're still sitting there probably thinking what the heck is this Canadian mother doing where are you going you cannot cross till four but I am smart I know this bureaucratic stupidity I showed up I show over there at four they'll say too late I checked on Google Maps and I didn't see anything and I see actually on Google Maps it showed a cop sitting in the middle right before the toll booth you know <laughs> and I'm thinking uh oh there's probably signs over there you know like saying no um, What's wrong with you? Oh, that's more like it. All right, so the guy said the emergency lane. Yeah, because you see, it's like less than a mile from where I was sitting. It's less than a mile. Where's the emergency lane somewhere here? The emergency lane. Mechanic bridge in for two and trucks use right lane. Uh, oh, emergency lane only. Oh, perfect. Emergency lane only. We're gonna stop here, emergency lane only, you see? Perfect, and I'll just wait here. And I'm the first guy. Well, I hope they don't give me a ticket over here. But the guy did say, emergency lane. He says, all the way to the right. Okay, so that's what I'm doing, right? Captain Sergio here. So I went to the lady in the booth. I said, uh, 
I pay over here, right? Because there was no toll collector in my lane. And she says, "Oh, I'm not sure we want to. We want you to sit over there." I said, "I talked to your boss. He says uh, I call him at 3:30. He says come down right now and and park in the emergency lane, as far as far uh, to the right as possible." And she says, and she called the guy uh, as I was waiting, and she said. Uh, yeah, go all the way to the sign. Go all the way to the uh, sign, the speed sign, and park right here. And you see now those two guys, like the last one doesn't have enough room. But. Oh, I can move a little. Yeah, I have to move, I have to move a little bit. Otherwise, that guy is blocking. <laughs> guy his ass so to speak the the green truck his ass <laughs> cleared the intersection <laughs> by the way that guy behind me uh, he was parked next to me and again I sometimes wonder you know what people are thinking but I don't like cri criticizing other people it just let's just say that if I was hauling a huge excavator like that, I would probably have, you know, I don't know, maybe six more chains, you know, maybe four. Another guy showed up, a guy with a B train. <coughs> So now this guy is going to be first because this guy is blocking me, this guy is blocking me, you know. <laughs> so sometimes when you are the last to the party, you actually you win, you know. Minutes after four, and finally I see some bridge authority guys showing up. Okay, so yeah, I know I'm pretty sure that we are not supposed to go like by ourselves, that there should be somebody. They're probably gonna close the bridge from the other side, but one guy showed up, so just as I thought. So one guy is on that side blocking. fun fun movie for all people who like trucking <laughs> sorry for the sound but I gotta keep it on you see all trucks we all have flashing lights um, why because of the low slow speed Turn my mirror down, my right mirror. I got the electric controls over here, right? And when I have an oversized load, I usually turn turn the right mirror down in a situation like this, so I can see the obstacle. Like in this case, I can see that curb because you know my sides are only about 15, 16 inches off the ground. why they probably uh, limit 
oversized loads is this. Only one lane is open. So basically the bridge is falling apart. They're trying to fix it. guys have made it a bit more narrow that would be really challenging because this is you guys can do better than this right like for example this pickup truck you could have parked a little bit to the left to make it more interesting close this lane over here I'm not sure like I cannot get to that side because there's a divider that raised the uh, middle so this was the first guy that left at uh, oh you see my trailer check this out uh, Blackhawk Blackhawk, who is that? Blackhawk, that's um, that other cheap one. What's the name? I forgot. No, wait. Blackhawk, that's uh, Rogers, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's uh, Rogers. Oh, guys. You, you would not believe how much time I spent on my computer just researching all these uh, brands. You know, before I bought before I bought the Kaufman, I was just so intense, so focused on this. I mean, somebody asked me about this. Did I always wanted to do this? Yes. Like from day one. Well, actually, I did not know even about this, right? When I started trucking, I thought maybe one day I'll do this, but when I went to Landstar. And that kind of like opened my eyes because you know the load board has uh, rates on it right and that's how I started kind of like I became interested uh, because of the money because I saw the potential the financial kind of like potential you know and I saw that the bigger and heavier the load was usually the more money it paid and so ever since I joined Landstar, that was my kind of like goal to become a heavy hauler and I love this I love these you know machines I like working with them I like driving them you know all these excavators it's, it's I don't know to me it's fun I feel like a kid and for me personally uh, the heavier the load the the happier I feel you know call me crazy but I love a friend of mine who pulls for Lansta. He has a three axle truck, just like a regular, you know, steer and, and two drives. And he says, you know, his truck is too old. He doesn't like doing heavy loads, but I don't know. Makes me kind of feel important. You know, you're doing something important. You're moving a huge machine from point A to point B. Let's say like that link belt, 80,000 pounds, right? On one, one day it's sitting in Carlisle, PA, and then fast forward a few days, and thanks to Captain Sergey over here, that machine is now sitting um, in, in Thunder Bay, Ontario. You know, so somebody does that, that kind of like work, and I just think it's, it's important, you know, and like I said, it makes me feel important, 
and uh, gives me you know makes me feel proud whereas when you pull a dry van I remember I really felt miserable because nobody wanted my load everybody was telling me basically go get lost park over there in the back will come and get you you know like you get no respect as a as a driving drive <laughs> driving driver you know here people wait for you they like the guy who hired uh, me is um, he asked me if I need any money for sitting I said yeah that would be nice and so he's giving me some money for the wash and he's giving me some money for the for the hotel you know so you will never get that with uh, with the drive-in load and that's all I gotta say about that and that's it we are rolling what a stupid bridge you know now in this sense the word stupid means annoying it's a legitimate use of an English word it means irritating annoying making one feel bad All right, so time now is 4.22. According to my uh, scientific research, and actually my speed is uh, limited to, uh, to um, yeah, something like this. 92 kilometers per hour, 57 miles per hour, that should keep me safe from cops. Uh, so yeah, according to my highly scientific research on Google, the sunset time in Gaylord, Michigan is at 5.15. 5.15. So now it's 4.23. So one hour till sunset. I have to shut down uh, 30 minutes after that and so I found a Walmart in Gaylord and I called them like I'm a nice guy most of the time I try to be so I called them I said is it okay for a semi truck to park somewhere in the back are you okay with that or will you try to uh, tow me away with my with my little excavator here and the girl on the phone said, no, that's fine. Just park in the back somewhere. I said, cool. Thank you, ma'am. But that one is, uh, so it's 90 kilometers, 56 miles. And because I'm driving slow, so pretty much for me, it'll be one hour. And actually you see the ETA estimated time of arrival is 5 12 p.m. so pretty much the sunset and so the complicated problem I'm trying to solve is whether I should stop there or whether I should stop whether I should go a little bit further and on my hand over here you see two magic numbers 270 and 251 those are uh, truck stops I, I found on uh, truck a path and now let's see so 270 is closer to me that's the mile marker 251 is further south so now let's just see which mile marker is this and then I will know how much time I have so this is uh, 336 mile marker 336 okay so 270 is 66 miles so I will need one hour, what, 10, 15 minutes, right? Still good. If I go to 251, that's 86 miles. 86 miles. So one hour will be 56. I will still basically, that would be like 90 minutes for me. So 525. Yeah, so I'll be there somewhere around 6 which is already after dark uh, that will be
will be 45 minutes after dark you see it's I know normally they will not you know cause you trouble for this but if I'm already passing you know the cop might say like why didn't you stop at mile marker 270 why are you keeping going to 251 you know and it's not that important anyway you see Gaylord 55 it's not that important anyway the guy the buyer contacted me this morning he says uh, somebody there will meet me and from Gaylord it's only about three hours drive so I might as well shut down at uh, Walmart over there but I just wanted to show you guys what sometimes you have to deal with as a heavy haul trucker right you see how many regulation it is you cannot go on the bridge unless you have an escort and you get conflicting messages all oh, park over there no don't park over there park over the, all the way to the right you know well at least I, I I crossed it and they didn't charge me the you know extra fee for being oversized they just charged me regular five bucks per axle just like a normal truck and so I'm glad about that one yeah just wanted to say two loads I'm looking at uh, one is going to Florida would really love to get away from this ugliness you know and the uh, Russian type of weather even though it's plus 3 which is about 36 37 F so one load is go going to Florida and another one I've been talking about but it's very cheap it's like four miles a, a four bucks a mile uh, from Pennsylvania back to Ontario so I don't know either I go empty back home which is shorter from Detroit I can go back to you know Toronto area in Canada empty and pick up a load and take to Florida or I can go to US I can go uh, 500 miles in US towards Pennsylvania and pick up a cheap load that goes to Ontario which actually does not make any sense because I don't care where I'm going right now, I'm just chasing the money. So Captain Sergey is on the hunt. I need to make as much money as possible till the, till the end of the year so I can shut down and uh, fly somewhere for a couple of weeks into a warm climate. So this is it, sorry for the long boring video, but uh, I hope you guys enjoyed that long exciting ride over the bridge. <laughs> Thanks for watching. And we're gonna finish this with this Kenworth guy passing me. That's the B train, oversized load. On the back of your sleeper, it says "Living the Dream," number two. But unfortunately, I cannot go as fast as he because my permit specifically says not faster than. So if I go like that, I will get a ticket. So I guess he's just trying to catch up with his body, identical truck. Probably that one is living the dream number one. <laughs> Take care guys and gals. Talk to you later.